It's April Fool's Day, but the market wasn't messing around today. The S&P 500 closed up over 1%. It closed above 4,000 for the first time in history, and we basically closed at the highs of the session with a surge straight into the close. And remember, today is the last day of this trading week, so those weekly candles will look nice and strong strong here as well. So a uh, great day for market participants. We'll take a look at all that, see what it means for our posture. We'll then get into a trade application example where I wanted to focus on an oil stock that seems to be bouncing up and off of a rising 30-day moving average. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Z. It's April 1st, 2021. First of all, if you're new, welcome aboard. Remember to go over to YouTube, click subscribe on our channel, then go down below and sign up for our email distribution list. In addition to that, we're heavy users of Twitter. My handle is at Brandon Van Z, and I would encourage you to follow me. And also, we really appreciate those of you that click like and retweet on these Market Outlook related posts. And then last but not least, we do have a presence on Facebook as well. Feel free to join our group at that web address you see in the logo in front of you. All right, so let's go ahead and get into today's activity. As I mentioned before, it was quite the doozy. Uh, I've got chart 6D pulled up here in front of us, and you can see that we closed up 1.18% on the S&P 500, and we got up and through that big round number of 4,000. So uh, as you can kind of see with this, uh, we'll look at this a little bit in greater detail on a different chart, but uh, we basically closed at the highs of the session today. We had a really strong push right into the close, and you know, as I mentioned before, tomorrow's Good Friday, and so uh, there is no uh, trading. Uh, we don't have our classes and, and things like that either as a result. Uh, trading will resume again on Monday. Uh, I think I did see that CNBC will be on uh, tomorrow for the jobs report because tomorrow is going to be the first Friday of the month, so that's a little bit unique. Uh, not sure if that will cause any, any waves there, but uh, nonetheless, it looks like market participants are in a joyous uh, mood here as we kind of head into the holiday weekend. Um, on this chart 6D, I usually like to show this whenever we have at least a 1% move in either direction. Uh, always enjoy the ones where the bars are nice and green like we saw this time around. You can see that this green bar is up and through this blue horizontal line on this graph here. That tells us that we made at least a 1% move up. And you can see we had another big uh, day there recently on March 26th as well. So um, one thing I should point out about this because I don't think I've uh, brought this particular uh, graph up since we kind of passed through the worst part of the coronavirus bottom. Remember, this is a one-year chart we're looking at here, so it kind of is a rolling one-year look-back period. For the longest time last year, whenever I'd bring up this chart, I would always have to compare, you know, the moves that we've had recently to the really exaggerated movements that occurred in March of last year. Now that we've kind of anniversaried that moment in time, um, you can see these lines kind of distributed a little bit more evenly throughout. So, um, you know, it kind of gives you the sense that we are having kind of a typical or normal amount of, of volatility here. There's nothing outrageous going on, uh, generally speaking. Uh, this is a strong market. While there have been patches, particularly the high growth areas that have struggled in um, relative terms, uh, generally speaking, the stock market itself has had uh, plenty of other little corners of the market that have kind of made up for any of those laggards that are along the way there. So uh, good times keep on rolling here uh, in the United States stock market. Let's go ahead and take a look now at chart 4B. And I actually just got done tweeting about this. So for those of you that follow me on Twitter, again, my handle is at Brandon Van Z. Uh, you might have seen me uh, tweeting about this, but there is uh, something of note that I need to point out here. Uh, otherwise, it might uh, confuse you. Um, down below here in the lower left-hand corner, normally this ticker symbol is COMP, um, and it's the NASDAQ composite. Um, just so happens that there was a new company that did an IPO here within the last couple of days called Compass Incorporated, and they actually took that, that, that ticker symbol of COMP. So the Thinkorswim platform no longer pulls up the NASDAQ composite when you pull up ticker symbol COMP, and so we have to kind of get used to this um, new ticker symbol here, and that new ticker symbol is COMP colon G-I-D-S. So again, COMP colon G as in Gary, I as in Indigo, D as in Dog, and S as in Sierra. 
Um, and so just be aware of that. Right now, this black label says unknown symbol because those are created through ThinkScript programming code. Um, and so I, over the weekend, for those of you that are premium members of Market Scholars, I'll go ahead and get these um, chart scripts updated and put together a new chart. So remember the way that this process will work is up here in the um, naming convention. I have a date. The most recent one that you see up there is January 16th, 2021, because that was the last time I made an update. But after I update this script, and I'll put you know the NASDAQ composite um, in the script so that way it comes up whenever we pull up comp um, colon GIDS, and uh, and then I'll change the, the date of the title up here to um, whatever I, day I do that this weekend. So um, remember, there's a tutorial video that goes along with all of those um, importable shared links for those of you that are premium members. So just be on the aware, or be, be aware of that slight change there. And remember, you could also pull up NDX or QQQ as well. However, it's not an exact replica because what we're looking at here is the whole composite of the, of the NASDAQ and not just the 100 levels largest holdings within there. So uh, if you want to kind of stay with the same routine that we have traditionally had during these presentations, then you're going to want to get used to that comp colon GIDS going forward. And speaking of which, it was a very good day for the NASDAQ composite. Um, we've seen some real good progress here over the last couple of days since I last did the video for you on Tuesday. You can see on that day it looked um, a little bit um, uncomfortable for those that wanted to be bullish on some of those high-tech stocks. But the last two days, we've seen some really strong and aggressive price action here. So uh, I have been impressed by that, and I am hopeful that that can kind of um, you know lead to further gains going forward. But um, I think that we've still got a little bit of work to do there, so it's not necessarily written in stone. Um, of course, the next thing on the board is probably these um, areas of resistance back over here where we kind of stalled out today. Back on March 15th, 16th and 17th, we kind of had um, high levels on those candles at around the same place where we ended today's um, session. So the good news is we closed near the high of today's session on the NASDAQ composite, just like we did with the S&P 500. So it wasn't a situation where um, the index went up to those levels and then failed and then you know put it put in a, um, a long upper shadow or something along those lines. You know it could have very well been a situation that if the market would have stayed open another three or four hours, who knows? Maybe we have got uh, right through that that resistance. So I think that's the, the positive side of it. We'll just have to see how the futures start trading again on Sunday night and into Monday's morning. But um, right now, I think it is a promising sign that the S&P 500 is hitting an all-time high. It's possible that um, market participants are going to um, kind of drag the, the NASDAQ up with the rest of the market, uh, whether it wants to come along for the ride or not. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that. But one thing to be aware of that with yesterday's move, we've now changed our posture on the NASDAQ composite from bearish to uh, weekly bullish here. Um, notice that the green line on the market forecast is rising right now. You can read that in the label right there. And uh, it's at 47 and rising. So because it's not above 50 yet, we're not painting that with that dark green color. It's just the light green. But as long as we get another upside day on uh, Monday, uh, there's a very good chance that we will then go to um, strongly bullish at that point. So uh, be on the lookout for that. In fact, we could probably say the same thing for the Russell 2000. Uh, notice that the Russell 2000's green line ended at 45. It is also rising, so we could very well have, um, you know, a, a double play. Today is, of course, uh, opening day there for a lot of uh, baseball teams around the country. Uh, so we could have a nice double play on Monday, potentially, if the markets are up yet again. Um, we might very well see that both the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 go from weakly bullish to strongly bullish. Now the Russell 2000 was up 1.5% today, so it actually uh, was the second best performer behind the NASDAQ today. One other thing I would add regarding the Russell 2000 is the move was strong enough where it actually took us up and over the 30-day moving average, and notice the 30-day moving average now changed to the color green. So that's telling us that not only did price close above it, but the moving average has actually started to tilt higher here yet again. 
So I know sometimes those of you that are not um, regular viewers of the video might have a hard time keeping up with all the color coding, but this is a pretty good educational example, side-by-side -side example here for you to kind of you know, sort that through in your head. Notice the NASDAQ composite is trading above its moving average, as is the Russell 2000. They're both trading above the moving average, but the NASDAQ composite's moving average is yellow, and this is a 30-day moving average, by the way, um, whereas the Russell 2000's moving average is green. So some of you might be wondering, well, wait a second, I thought you know, when price was above it, it would be green. Well, it depends. It depends on if the moving average itself is also going in that direction. So what this is telling us over here on the NASDAQ is price is above the moving average, and that's a good positive sign, but the moving average itself continues to fall. Now, if price can stay above the moving average, for the next several days, eventually the moving average will start flattening out and then even will start creeping a bit higher. And at that point, then you would get a green moving average. So there's a little bit of work to do there because there has been more selling on the, uh, you know, pressure on the NASDAQ in general. And remember the 30 day moving average is effectively just taking the last 30 days worth of information. So it is a lagging indicator and uh, it takes a little bit of time for it to kind of bend from one direction towards the other. But again, this is a, a promising sign that we are seeing right here with the NASDAQ. It looks a lot better than it did just a couple of days ago, which again, is the whole point of us you know, doing these videos uh, as often as we can. Now, heads up, next week, I think David will be with you on Monday, but he's going to be on vacation on, I think it's Wednesday and Friday of next week. So just be aware of that. Uh, there will not be uh, Market Outlook videos on those days when he's out of town. I'll still be doing it on Tuesday and Thursday next week, however, so I'll try to communicate that with you at the time as well. Anyway, um, with the S&P 500, it, of course, is at a new all-time high. Uh, it is still with a strongly bullish posture, no surprise there. Typically, when we're at new all-time highs, we have strong bullish postures. And we also have a, a green moving average, which is a good sign. The Dow Jones, which had been kind of our leader in recent weeks and months, um, really didn't perform to the upside. Today was kind of a risk on mindset where market participants wanted to, to take on more risk. Remember, the Dow Jones typically does a little bit better um, on a relative basis when the market is not necessarily keen to taking on more risk. In other words, it's got the big blue chip companies embedded within the Dow Jones, and those were the stocks that really benefited in the last couple of weeks. Um, but today was a little bit of a, a reversal of that, where today market participants were just kind of rushing into some of the more risky assets out there. So, you know, who wants to buy Procter & Gamble and Coca-Cola if you can get out there and you buy the, the latest, greatest cloud computing stock or something like that? So uh, be aware that the Dow was up today. It was up 0.30%, but uh, it was the lag of these four on a one-day basis. However, we are very close to all-time highs on the Dow uh, that was just placed here on Monday of this week. We're much closer to um, getting a new high on the Dow than we would be for the Russell 2000 and for the NASDAQ composite. So despite the Dow kind of lagging a little bit today, if markets do remain bullish going forward, I would have fully expect the Dow Jones to be the next one now after the S&P 500 to hit a new all-time um, high. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our three green arrow status now, and that is chart 4D for those of you following along at home. Now, here's another chart that we're going to have to get updated when I redo the, the think scripts over the weekend. Again, down below, here's how it will look uh, if you're just pulling up the default charts right now because this uh, ticker comp is now um, owned by Compass Incorporated, which did their IPO yesterday, which is a common stock. So it's not the NASDAQ composite anymore. So again, just type in COMP colon uh, GIDS, I think it was, and then hit enter, and there it goes. That's the actual NASDAQ composite. Uh, anyway, as we're looking at the three green arrows um, chart set up here on chart 4D, you can see that we have three green arrows on two of our charts. We've got the S&P 500, naturally, again, all-time highs there. It's not a surprise to see a three green arrow status on a situation like that. But somewhat a little bit more surprising might be the NASDAQ composite actually has three green arrows right now all of a sudden as well after just having three red arrows a couple of days ago. So that just kind of is proof in the pudding how aggressive these last two days have been for the NASDAQ. It's been really, really impressive to see them launching higher. Uh, where it takes us from here is anybody's guess. As I mentioned before, we do have some resistance to contend with from back here in mid-March. If we can get up and past that, I think 
um, you know, we can get this thing cooking again. But uh, if it fails at that level, then uh, there is a decent chance it could easily slip right back below that falling moving average again. So the next couple of trading days will be pretty critical for the NASDAQ in terms of which direction uh, do we think it's going to be going uh, in the future. So of the two charts, I think if you're a trend trader, and remember it's the trend trader that would be um, thinking about the three green arrow status, uh, without a doubt in my mind, it is the uh, S&P 500 that has the much better looking trend here. The NASDAQ, great to see the three green arrows, but you still have work to do in terms of the trend itself. So um, one day at a time, but right now, positive advancement there from the NASDAQ composite. We like what we see. And uh, over here on these other charts, the Dow Jones and the Russell 2000, we've got a mix of green and red arrows. Both of them have green arrows on the moving averages and the stochastics. Both of them are red arrows on the MACD histogram. So um, we just don't have enough positive price momentum to push that up and above the zero line on the MACD yet. Once that happens, we will get a green arrow. So that could happen very quickly. Uh, again, if the Dow hits a new record high next week, I would fully expect um, you know, a green arrow to, to, to show up here on the MACD histogram as well. Looks like we've got a little bit more work to do on the Russell 2000. So it, it might require more than a day for the Russell 2000 in this case, because this MACD histogram is still quite a long ways away from that zero line there. Nonetheless, again, as I mentioned before, positive sign to see the Russell 2000 close above the 30 day moving average. Um, it's effectively the, um, you know, the, the last time we're going to see trading this week. And so that's a good idea there as well to keep your eye on the weekly candles. And that's going to show up positively from that perspective. All right, let's go ahead and pop on over here to the internet uh, briefly. I always like to get a chance to say thank you to those of you that helped support this Market Outlook presentation. The last time I did it on Tuesday, 103 of you uh, were able to, to take the five seconds out of your day to click like, and I do appreciate that. Anytime we're up and over um, 100 likes, um, I'm not going to fight it. In other words, uh, let's keep on doing the videos. If we're below 100 likes, then I, I start questioning whether we need to do it five times a week. So um, if you guys want to keep the videos com coming as fast as they can and as often as they can, uh, do your best to help support it there on Twitter as well. We really appreciate that. You guys have done a fantastic job for us. And um, as a small business, um, that's one of the few ways we can get the word out about our business. And so we really appreciate your guys' help in those efforts there. Uh, also, uh, earlier today, I taught my, um, my question and answer session, and uh, we had some great uh, questions coming in as we always do. Uh, Laurelyn uh, had a question about where do we find the, the class rules or my trading plans for the top-down trend trading class. Uh, we had a question from Steve uh, regarding uh, an effective way and an efficient way to try to go look for um, stocks that uh, have a good fit for our um, options for long-term investors class. And I haven't mentioned this in a while, but just as a heads up, maybe I'm going to jinx ourselves here, but um, we have not lost a single trade in that class in the entire last year, uh, which is a pretty remarkable feat. Now, it is true that we start with, um, with, with above average probabilities when we are selling out of the money puts. Uh, but even so, uh, to place as many trades as we have in that class for an entire year with zero losing trades is an impressive feat. So if you are interested in that concept of selling puts, um, on high quality dividend growth stocks. I would encourage you to join my Monday afternoon class there. Uh, Lisa had a question uh, regarding um, SLG and a potential reverse split, which after we investigated it a little bit further, we realized it was actually a special dividend that was paid out as a um, stock uh, dividend uh, rather than a cash dividend. So we learned a few things there. We also reviewed uh, Aaron's, uh, the rent to own business model a little bit earlier. Uh, I also gave a few folks my take on uh, the gold mining assets and, and gold itself. Uh, we then had a question about moving our price targets up, or at least potentially doing so in our factor-based swing trading class. Uh, talked about the stock selector tool a bit more and how you can get some more information on that. And then also gave my thoughts on Tesla, which of course we continue to have our bearish trade idea on Tesla alive and well in this particular Market Outlook presentation. So if you're interested in any of those topics, remember the Q&A class is exclusive to those of you that are premium members of Market Scholars, but that has been posted. Feel free to check that out if you're looking for some additional content to sink your teeth into this weekend. Uh, David also taught his um, uh, ETF uh, portfolio management class earlier today. 
And a friendly reminder that tomorrow, being Good Friday, we don't have any classes here uh, since the stock market is not open. And David will be taking Saturday off as well as he typically does on the holiday weekends there. So our next class will be my uh, top-down trend trading class on Monday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So I'll be looking forward to um, joining all of you for that and hopefully um, get a chance to enjoy your Easter ham and your Easter egg hunts with all the young kids and all that kind of fun stuff over the weekend and then get recharged for another great week of trading in my trading rooms next week. Also, since we are in the new month now, a friendly reminder that if you are a premium member of Market Scholars, um, remember that David updates this link called Trading Rooms Registration, which comes with the added convenience of having you guys register for all of our April classes in just a couple of clicks rather than having to do that with every single class that you join along the way. So if you are a premium member, uh, he, sh he should have emailed you, so you should have received that in whatever uh, email address you have um, uh, registered on our website. Uh, but in case that got stuck in the junk mail or something along those lines, remember you can always come up here to the tools area, hover your mouse over that, then click on premium resources, and then the trading rooms registration link will be the first one up there at the top. All right, let's get back on over here to a few more charts. Uh, let's take a look at the 1040 crossover method since this is the last um, trading day of the, the week here in this particular case since we have a rare Friday holiday tomorrow. And let me also change the comp over here. So comp colon GIDS. And as we're looking at this particular chart setup for C, a uh, reminder that um, these are weekly candle charts and each one of the charts represents three years in length. And what we're trying to do is establish where are the longer term trends? Are we do we have you know strong bullish longer term trends or do we have bearish longer term trends? And right now we continue to have bullish longer term trends. The background colors of the charts will change once we have a um, crossover of the moving averages themselves. Now on these particular charts, the moving averages are represented by the orange and the blue colors. The orange moving average is the 10 week moving average and the blue color is the 40 week moving average. And as you can see here with the Russell 2000, for example, we had a bullish crossover here the first week of August and we've remained bullish this entire time period. And you can see um, basically in some very good positionings in all of those charts cases. The one that is maybe a little bit more concerning is the NASDAQ. You can see that this kind of green line down below here on the PPO is kind of moving back towards zero. What that is telling us is that this orange 10 week moving average is starting to decline towards the 40 week moving average there. And when you see those lines pinching, that usually means that there has been some selling pressure in the near term. And of course, we've already talked about that there with the NASDAQ. It has been a difficult couple of months for the NASDAQ compared to most of those other areas. So of these four charts we have in front of us, the best looking one is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Notice that green line there is actually rising, telling us that those two lines are separating away from one another, which is telling us that near term or more recent price action is likely accelerating at a rate greater than the averages over the longer term. And so that is generally perceived a positive sign there. So uh, good, uh, good, good strong trends for the most part um, on these longer term views here, just like we see in the shorter term. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some 12 grid analysis now, starting with chart 5A, and this is our asset class 12 grid. Background colors of these charts will tell us whether we have a bullish or bearish posture using the intermediate line on the market forecast technical indicator. And this is a somewhat of a rarity here. In fact, I would go as far as to say less than 10% of the time you ever see me bring up this first set of 12 grids here, uh, chart 5A, would you see something like this? In other words, a clean sweep for bullish postures. It is really, really hard to get a clean sweep of either bullish or bearish postures on this particular chart because in a lot of ways, these come from so, um, so different and random areas of the financial world that it's rare that they would all be kind of syncing up at the same time. We see this much more often when we look at the sectors 12 grid because there, yeah, it makes sense that if the stock market is you know, roaring higher that there are times when all sectors are also roaring higher. But remember that this first asset class 12 grid does not just look at the stock market. We're looking at commodities and fixed income and interest rates and all kinds of things. So this is a, an incredible rarity that we see here. 
especially these two. Remember that typically what you find is that interest rates and um, bond prices move inversely to one another. So typically, when you're looking at TLT over here on the left-hand side and you're looking at TNX down in the bottom right-hand corner, one of them will be green and one of them will be red. Um, so this is a rare, rare chance to see both of them green at the exact same time. Now of the two, I think um, the, the, the darker shade of green um, does show uh, what the expectation should be. In other words, we still have a very strong upward ascent when it comes to the 10-year treasury yields and interest rates in general. We do have a light green background color on TLT, which is basically recognizing that, yes, we've had a little bit of an oomph, oomph off the bottom there, and I would also say that it's promising, and, and I had this conversation earlier today with gold as well because it's kind of in the same boat, both TLT and gold um, they were they were each able to retain strength this past week prior to breaking down to a fresh lower low. And that's saying something, right? Because for the last three months, you've always gone to a lower low. So this is the first time where TLT and GLD have not gone to lower lows. We were saved by the bell right here on GLD where we barely um, did not, you know, cross that, that, that candle there on the um, 8th of, of, of March. And then for TLT, it was the 18th of March. But in both cases, what we had been used to, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. Now we got an equal low on GLD and we got a slightly higher low on TLT. Now, because we haven't broken through and above that falling moving average yet, it's possible this is part of a broader formation. So I don't know if the, the story is necessarily written in ink yet. Uh, we might just have it in pencil right now and it might get erased very, very quickly. So we have to keep our eyes on that. If we do start establishing some trading ranges above these moving averages here, then yes, I think we, will, we might be able to look back and say, yes, there could be a legitimate reversal um, opportunity taking place here. But until we do that, I still have to remain somewhat hesitant there. So it's good to see that we have at least a weekly bullish posture, which is what those light green background colors are telling us. And there has been some decent price activity here um, this week in both of them. But until they start trading above those moving averages, I think we just got to do our best to stay prudent and cautious around those themes. And when they do turn, I'll be the first to, to, to look for opportunities there. Uh, but it's just that people who have kind of jumped into those areas a little bit too early in the past have lived to regret it. And uh, we'd want to at least let other people take that brave move uh, and get into those assets. And then if they can hold, uh, then we might start filtering into those types of trades as well. Um, anyway, as we're looking at some of these other trades here, uh, be aware that the dollar was down today. And remember, that is supportive of a lot of risk-oriented assets, including commodities and including foreign assets. And so with the US dollar being down 0.44% today, it was down for the second straight day after putting in this overbought cluster signal. Remember, I had that conversation with you on Tuesday saying whoever was brave enough to buy this oversold cluster signal and, and, and bought it there at the low and sold it up here when it got the overbought cluster signal on the high, uh, you're doing pretty good for yourself. So two days in a row, we've now seen selling action after that overbought cluster signal. Doesn't always work perfectly like that, but in that particular case, it worked out pretty well. So there is quite a bit of a gap here between where the dollar is trading and where it's rising 30-day moving averages. It is possible that we do roll over a little bit further before establishing a new round of support. So um, that's a little bit nerve wracking there for those of you that wanna be bullish on the dollar. Now remember, for the most part, it's actually healthy for the markets when the dollar is weak. So I, for one, am kind of hoping that it does fall towards that moving average, um, but I'm a realist at the same time and know that it's been so strong that you can't just assume that's going to happen. But um, if it does, it would really be healthy for a lot of the other areas of the market. You can see that with the dollar being down today, gold was up over 1%. We had oil up over 3% we had foreign markets outperforming US markets. EFA was up 1.3%. And um, I, I guess I, I take that back. The emerging markets were, were 
a little bit under the performance of the U.S. market, but still a pretty decent day. They were up nearly 1% there today with the emerging market. So um, again, I think the story here is nice, healthy, risk-taking type of a day. We like to see that here. Uh, let's take a peek at the, um, at the uh, sectors, and that'll be chart 5C now. And as we're looking at this, Again, clean sweep across the board. Now, as I mentioned before, this is not as unique. Uh, we have seen plenty of times when all of these charts are green or all of them are, are pink because they're all stocks and they tend to sometimes you know, travel in the same direction. But again, if you needed you know, uh, any sort of a reminder that the stock market is in a strong move right now and there is a decent amount of healthy activity taking place, then maybe this is the visual you need, a clean sweep across the board on all 11 sectors. So that's a great sign. Remember two days ago, I was worried about technology. So it's really good that technology shot like a cannon to the upside because now I don't have that worry anymore. Right? It's not necessarily like this is the best chart on the planet or anything like that, but at least it's not like a potential risk of the market in the near term. Now you're actually looking at that as kind of gaining a little bit of steam here. And when technology supports the market, that is usually a great sign. I, I love it when technology leads. Um, it's just that we can't always see that. And, and recently we've seen kind of the old school um, you know, blue chip companies kind of being the leaders and technology kind of sit in the back seat. If they could reassert themselves in, in, in the driver's seat, that would um, help the entire market. So uh, really good to see that move in technology in the last couple of days. You also saw communications, while it didn't look nearly as bad as technology, still a great sign to see it back above its moving average as well. Notice communications very quickly is back to a green moving average. Um, technology is not. Technology's moving average was going down at such a rapid pace that even a quick little shot higher in price activity is not enough to turn that 30-day moving average around. But for the communications, we're kind of back on track here. So um, who knows? Maybe we'll take a look at a communication stock um, on um, in my class on Monday if it can get back into the top four. So we'll see. Um, anyway, as we're looking at um, you know the best and the, and, and the worst here today, we do see that technology and energy were our best. So energy was up 2.55%. And then on the downside of the market were kind of our more defensive areas. Um, in particular, Staples was down 0.48%. And then we also had healthcare down 0.3%. So not big down days uh, for those. And they do maintain their, their strongly bullish posture despite you know, having sold off here today. Um, but uh, that's the type of activity you want to see. You know, uh, I, I own personally more consumer staples than I do in, in the vast majority of other sectors. So me personally, maybe I don't necessarily like to see the consumer staples selling off, but judging by the health of the market, I do like to see when the S&P 500 is being led higher by technology because consumer staples oftentimes uh, are benefited when the markets are nervous. And if you want bullishness across the board with the market, then you'd rather have technology leading the way. So I'll sacrifice my own personal holdings and my dividend growth investing portfolio for the greater good of the bullish bear, or the bullish, uh, you know, strongly bullish markets that we are now seeing in front of us here. So again, um, notate that uh, energy does have a 2.55% move here today, and we did close barely above that rising moving average again. I'm pointing that out because our trade application example will come from, once again, the oil and gas world. So I'm gonna pull up chart 3A here, which is the swing trading chart that I use in my Wednesday morning class. And I'm gonna pull up ticker symbol CLR. This is Continental Resources. I grew up in South Dakota. This is a company that has a stronghold up in North Dakota in a lot of the Bakken shale areas. So uh, that was a real hot um, oil and gas play there a few years back. It's cooled off tremendously over the years with the falling oil and gas prices, but who knows, maybe they're coming back to life here uh, once again. So um, we're gonna give this another shot. Uh, I did a couple of oil trades a couple weeks Weeks back that did not turn out well, unfortunately. Uh, those I was kind of playing the breakouts, not necessarily my my strong point. Uh, here we're going to play the bounce, which sometimes I feel a little bit more comfortable with. Um, so like a lot of oil and gas stocks, Continental kind of topped out here maybe three or four weeks ago, pulled back strongly, but kind of maintained strength and garnered support 
carving out a little bit of a kind of a cup here, cup-shaped action right around that rising 30-day moving average. And that's the type of behavior I like to see. So once we've established support around there, it gives us the impression that the um, bullish traders out there are going to start taking the reins away from the bears who had control of this chart for a very brief period of time here. All in all, this is a very strong chart. Obviously, this three-month time period, this particular stock is up 62%. So this is a stock that has a lot of relative strength versus the S&P 500 way down below here. So um, I've already done the trade. As you guys know, uh, I go ahead and, and, and do the trade while the market is open, and that way I can send out the trade alerts to all of you who are premium members. The trade's already done. You can kind of see some of the markings on my chart here as to where I've kind of established my uh, upward price target, which is right around $30 per share. And my downside stop loss is a little bit below this candle over here. So the hope with this particular trade is now that the blue line has reversed course and headed higher, which is what that blue background is telling us. In other words, the near-term posture is currently bullish. Not only that, but the intermediate posture is also bullish. It's considered weakly bullish because it's at 43 and rising, but nonetheless, we have two different kind of schools of traders here that might be interested in this trade. We're doing it as a bullish swing trade in this case, but we might also have another group of traders who are trend traders that are also interested in this particular chart. One thing I do wanna point out, this stock does have an earnings announcement coming up here on May 3rd. Typically when I'm doing swing trades, I'm gonna give myself about a three week window uh, to place a trade prior to an earnings announcement. So in this case, we do have an entire month, but I'm just pointing that out because if this ends up being a stock that we get into and then it just goes sideways here for the next several weeks, I will likely pull the plug on this trade prior to that earnings announcement in that case. And if I do, I will send that information out to all of our premium members via the Telegram Trade Alerts app that we utilize there. So be on the lookout for that. But that's what I had for you here today, kind of a turnaround play there in the oil and gas uh, world where we've got a nice rising 30-day moving average. We've got bullish postures according to the market forecast, and we're going to try to reach for about that $30 level where the stock was trading here about a month or so ago. So that's all I got for you here today. It was a fun day, not only, of course, because of April Fool's Day, uh, but just the sheer fact that the markets are ripping higher and uh, we closed above 4,000 there on the S&P 500. So hopefully that bodes well as we head into trading next week. Again, a reminder, stock market's not open tomorrow, uh, but we'll be back in, in action in my classes on Monday. So feel free to join me there if you're a premium member. And then David should be with you Monday afternoon for the Market Outlook uh, presentation at that time. So I hope you all enjoy your weekend. Uh, enjoy your friends and family around you uh, for the holiday. And uh, hopefully get uh, rejuvenated to come back to the markets. And uh, remember, if you got value out of tonight's video, uh, do me a favor. Go on over to Twitter. Click like for me there. You can also do that directly below the video on our website if you're watching it there. Or you can go into the description area uh, in, in the YouTube um, apps and uh, you can find the Twitter link there. So a few different ways for you to do that. But that would be the best way for you to tell us thank you and to help support this project going forward. So with that, I want to wish you all the best of success with your trades and your investments. Goodbye for now.